Okay. All right. I've uh, never really done this kind of thing before. My parents said, Zoe, why don't you finally try one of those dating apps? And I was like, yeah, fine, okay. Next thing I know, my little sister, Brat, has grabbed my phone and she's sending all of these little hearts, you know, to all kinds of people. I could have killed her. And then guys start sending me hearts and, you know, some of them look like kids in junior high school and then other ones look like my Uncle Leo. And then, and then <laughs> there's this uh, one guy, Anthony, who seems like a nice guy, I guess sent me a heart and we started sending some messages back and forth and now I'm going to meet seems like a nice guy Anthony I'm not sure why I sent a heart to this girl Zoe I mean I liked her name and her picture was yeah she's really cute um maybe too cute I just don't know what it is about this online dating stuff it just seems so impersonal you know like do people actually tell the truth on these things are their pictures really them or or them now and not like 10 years ago uh, but this Zoe girl I don't know why I'm just really excited to meet her I've kind of been on a dating hiatus for a while now because well some relationship crap you know <laughs> Ooh, online dating I feel like I just made a commercial about myself and uh, Anthony must have watched it <laughs> oh I think that's him hi, hi. Anthony? Uh, yeah. Uh, Hi. Zoe. Yes. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> um, great to meet you. Yeah, you too. Uh, so I saw earlier the restaurant is kind of noisy and crowded, and it might be a long wait, but I thought I could get takeout and we could eat in my car. You want me to eat in your car? Well, yeah. No, I, I thought it'd be great to have a conversation and, you know, get to know each other a little better. Than... You realize that sounds kind of strange, though, right? Um... Yeah. No, I'm sorry. That would be weird. Um, we could eat in your car, though. I uh, rode my bike. Oh, that's pretty cool. And I didn't have time to do a full background check on you. That makes sense. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, oh, I'm okay. sure that your car will be fine. Great. Um, yeah, well, or we could do a picnic. I have uh, blankets and things in my trunk. Along with a dead body? Huh. Kidding. <laughs> yeah, okay, Get it? Because... Right. Uh, uh, great. I will get some food. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I'll have the, the vegetable stir fry with brown rice and a Diet Coke. Um, and, and an egg roll, and uh, uh, chopsticks. Chopsticks, yeah, chopsticks. You got it. <laughs> I'm going out with a really handsome guy tonight. My husband, Kevin. Lucky me. It's our 13th anniversary. The unlucky one, I suppose. You know, it's funny. One of the 15th century definitions of the word anniversary is commemorating the death of a martyr. That's somewhat alarming. I think marriage is like a car, right? If it's running smoothly, there's no problem. It's fine. But if you ignore the occasional tune-up, cars, like marriages, can break down. Parts start to fail, the, the oil gets low, the tires wear out, and if you ignore it long enough, it just it stops working altogether. The car breaks down. It's, it's weird. I actually had a dream the other night where I'm driving this car of our marriage. And I wondered where I'd go. What roads would I take? Would I, would I back up, make a U-turn, keep going straight, slam on the brakes, drive it to the junkyard? <laughs> I don't know. Cars and marriages, it's not a perfect analogy, but close. Bye. Hey, Rachel, running a bit late. I'm on my way. got a hot date tonight. She is smart, talented, witty, beautiful. You'll see. Great mom. It's our anniversary. 13 years. <laughs> you know, in a lot of ways, and uh, I guess this is pretty normal, feels like it's been forever. 
And I don't necessarily mean that in a positive way. I mean, yeah, I love Rachel, I guess. It's just that, you know, every now and then I have to ask myself, are we really married? Or did we just get together and have a couple of kids? Is that a terrible thing to say? Yeah, maybe. When I think about Rachel, do I really know her? I mean, I know a lot of stuff about her, but do I really know her, love her? I'd like to. She's incredible in so many ways, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's funny, when I first met her, I thought she might be like Rachel from the TV show Friends. I thought that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Well, my Rachel and the TV show Rachel have very little in common. <laughs> Hey. Sorry, I'm late. I, uh... No, it's fine. I, um... I got your text. Kids doing okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're fine. Just, um... The, uh, restaurant's not gonna hold our reservation forever, so... Okay. We could go in. Or not. Up to you. It's our anniversary. Come on, Kevin. Smile. Let's go enjoy dinner. Yeah. This for me? Oh, yeah. This is for you. Thank you. I live on a beautiful street. Got a lot of great neighbors, our lovely home. Yeah, Grace and I bought this place, what, 35 years ago. Hasn't really changed much since. Well, a few years back, Grace decided she needed a new kitchen, but other than that, yeah. We raised our three kids here, watched them grow and then leave. And it's been a good life. And after we became empty nesters, Grace decided she wanted to open up a flower shop. Grace's Floral. Yeah, it's just a few blocks down there around the corner. She really is amazing. I would not wish any companion in the world but her. It's, um, that's Shakespeare. Oh, it is almost time for Christopher to be home. We have been married for, let's see, 40, 42 years now. They've been good years. They've been great years, actually. And Christopher stays busy, he stays active. Um, unfortunately, cancer just doesn't seem to care too much about all that, especially the kind he has. But he's been handling it really well so far, though. He is, he's my hero. He's the love of my life. <laughs> he had a doctor's appointment today, so we'll see how that went. I try not to get my hopes up. Hey. There you are. Yeah. I read the review of The Sound of Music today. Oh, come on. You know I don't read reviews. Yeah, well, I read it, and they loved it. Oh. They compared it to a Broadway production. Ooh. Anytime anyone compares a high school production to a Broadway show, they're out of their freaking mind. So, how was your appointment with Dr. Azari? Uh, it was fine. All you ever say is fine. It was fine. Yes, it was the same thing as last time. No improvement. It's still there. So, how's your flower shop today? I'm getting tired of fine. We haven't even talked about what's going on with you. Can we do that today, please? Yes, that's fine. Teasing you, okay? Yes. We'll do it tonight. How's that? That's cool. Thank you. Really like eating at the club, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the flowers. Your mother would be proud. Here's to 13 years. Cheers. 13. Pretty forgettable, wouldn't you say? More like non-memorable? Unmemorable. Rachel, the writer. Words, words, words. Heaven, the architect. Straight lines, foundation, steel, cement. Good, good, got it. <laughs> Make any progress on the new book today? Yeah. Yeah, I got the galleys back. It looks good. 
I took Jimmy to soccer, got a workout in at the gym. Your day? Oh, same old. Do you remember our first anniversary? Um, uh, yeah, the, um... Pizza parlor on 45th. It's gone now, but they had great pizza. Sounds familiar. We split a large. My half was pepperoni, extra cheese. Your half was Hawaiian. <laughs> Still don't get that pineapple on pizza thing. I love it. And pepperoni? Exactly what animal is that from? No idea. Several, probably. <laughs> Here's what I remember. We couldn't wait to get home, get our hands on each other, celebrate a whole year of mad, passionate love. You were beautiful that night. So were you. You remember. I do. We haven't had pizza in a while. Now I know. We used to have it, what? Three, four, sometimes more times a week. Got to admit, I miss the ambiance of the noisy, hot pizza parlor. Can I answer any questions for you? Um, celebrating anything special? It's our anything? anniversary. <laughs> Wonderful. I have a special menu just for anniversaries, if you'd like to see that. Oh, that's OK. No big deal. It's fine. Oh, OK. Um, well, uh, just go ahead and Continue looking at the menu then for a while. Thanks. No big deal? Yeah, it's number 13. Should we try for 13 more? Let's try for two, see how we're doing. 15, huh? That would be cause for celebration. Not so much 13? Nah. Unlucky. You know, 15, 20, 25, 10 even, but 13? Yeah, pretty forgettable, like you said. Unmemorable. No big deal. All right, um, so I have a couple blankets here. Oh, I'll perfect. Grab that. I'll get the food. OK, I'll grab then, yeah, this Yeah, I'll one. just grab this one, too. And there should be a spot real close. All right. So this place is good. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, Anthony, uh, where did you get your name? Uh, my dad. Yeah, it's, it's his middle name, so real original. Yeah. Anyone ever call you Antonio? Can I give it like a Latin flavor? Uh, I don't think so. Ant-Man? The uh, superhero? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Tony. My sister, and I hate that name. Okay, so. so no no Tony the Tiger. Nope. Got it. <laughs> I guess we'll just have to go with Anthony. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you. Um, Thought of it myself. Yeah. So is anyone else in your family named Zoe? Um, no, just me. My parents actually named me Elizabeth, but it was really hard to say as a kid. The TH never came out quite right. OK, Elizabeth, yeah. yeah. So I guess Beth was out of the question. Yes. They tried yeah. Liz, too, but I didn't like it. You know, something about the, the Z, though. I liked the Z. So Zoe. And the E has uh, those two little dots above it. An umlaut. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Zoe with an umlaut. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Good, because if you didn't, uh, I don't think we could be friends. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rather interesting reaction. Well, I'm an interesting woman. Yes, you are. Rachel, we're pretty open with each other. Yeah. yeah. But uh, there's there are certain things we just we don't really talk about. I haven't, how do I say this? I haven't really been honest with you. OK. I don't really know where you're going with this. Uh, so. it's, it's not what you think. Um, no, what I mean is, yeah, there, there are certain things I, I don't open up to you about. And um, I'd like to. Well, why don't you? You don't trust me? Come on, you brought up the trust issue. I was talking about honesty. Honesty, trust are sort of the same thing. Sort of, sort of. I guess, I guess I don't trust you in some ways. All right. 
Well, speaking of honesty, what are you what are you hiding? Well, nothing really, just just not opening up. Yeah. Well, oh, come on, a lot of men don't. Yeah. Well, I don't want to be like a lot of men. I want to feel like we know each other. I want to be honest with you. I want to trust you. And reciprocity would be nice. Trust. Honesty. After 13 years, is this really something that bothers you? Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm in. Truth. Honesty. I like it. Good. So, do you think that I know who you are down deep? Your, your hopes, your dreams, your anxieties, your fears? I mean, you know I dream about living in the south of France one day. See? You don't want to talk about it. Did you plan all this, Kevin? The, the trust thing, honesty, getting to know each other? No. But you've been thinking about it. Yeah. And you're bringing it up tonight. Uh-huh. You're an interesting guy, Kevin. I'll take that as a compliment. It wasn't really meant to be. How's your salad? Interesting. Good. I think it's time we talked about... Cancer? Yeah, the cancer. Are you scared? No. No, I think I'm actually more curious you know, about what's on the other side. I think I'll be, I don't know, I think it'll be different. I think I'll be surprised. Are you ready to go? I... Yeah, well, the funny thing is I, I really thought I'd have some more time to work on some of this stuff. Could have had more time with the kids, more time with you. And there's all that... That heaven stuff. Do you have, I mean, do you have a clear idea as to what heaven's really like? Not really, no. It just it sure sounds like a lovely place. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, there's all that talk about a judgment day and, and reckoning and, you know, meeting God. And I, uh, this sounds busy and confusing. I mean, I just want to relax on the other side. You know, I want to find some distant corner of the universe and just take it easy. Uh, you think you think it might be possible that God has created some some vacation planet named Cancun <laughs> or something? Well, where I can I can escape to and just I don't know, just wait for you. Maybe. It's a lovely idea. Yeah. So where can you and I escape to? No, I still have the energy and the time. I would go anywhere in the world with you, Christopher Stevens. <laughs> we can mm -hmm. climb every mountain, yeah, ford every stream, can follow every rainbow. And we can stay as long as we like. Deal. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And you're going to school here? Yeah, um, at the community college. Cool. Uh, what are you studying? Arts. Wow. Yeah, I work with oils, acrylics, watercolor, charcoal, crayons. <laughs> uh, so you want to be an artist then? Or do you think you'll end up teaching? I want to be an artist. Yeah. You know, selling my stuff all over the place, online, offline. <laughs> you know, my grandpa is a school teacher. I don't really think that's for me. It's too structured. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can see that. What does that mean? Oh, well, just that you seem like you... Yeah, Unstructured? But... No, 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 I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. <laughs> okay. That's really cool, though. Um, do you ever use a computer to draw? Oh, no. Uh, not really my thing. No. What about you? Uh, no, I never draw with a computer either. No, no, I, I meant. I, um... I know what you mean. Sorry, that was, that was a joke. Um... Oh, humor. Okay, so you're trying to impress me. Uh, I try. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> no. I'm a chemistry major at State, so I transferred there after my sophomore year. Are you going to be a doctor? I'm thinking dentistry. Wow. Wait, wait looking in people's mouths all day long? <laughs> well, I hadn't really thought of it that way before. What, they didn't tell you? I'm sure they'll get around to it. <laughs> maybe they just don't want to scare you away. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, do you like mouths? I guess, yeah. Do you like mine? Huh? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. lovely. Yeah, how yeah. gracious. Yeah. Okay. It's a beautiful mouth. Huh? Thank you. Yeah. No one's ever told me that I had a beautiful mouth before. Oh. Yeah, they must not have been paying attention. Thank you. Thank you. So when did we stop noticing each other? What are you talking about? I didn't notice you. When? All the time. I'm looking at you right now. Ha. Huh. Funny. No, no, I'm serious. You, when you come into the bathroom and I'm in the shower, it's like I'm invisible. You never say anything about me when I'm in the shower. You're changing the subject. Not really? Come on, you used to jump in the shower with me. And since you aren't joining me in the shower anymore, I... Well, it's just... Come on, Rachel. It's not that I don't notice you. It's just that... I don't know. You I... don't know? Or you don't want to say? Well, do you want me to notice you? It would be nice. Yeah, women like to be noticed, seen. At least I do. Other people notice me. Sure, I'm sure they do. And I'm sure you get noticed. Sometimes. But we don't notice each other? Really see each other? Weird. Hey, where you headed? Uh, I gotta go pick up a prescription. Um, when are you going to tell me what Dr. Zari really said? Well, he mentioned a few treatments and options, you know, that kind of thing. Wait, you discussed all of that without me even being there? Uh, Grace, I didn't even know Azari was gonna be there, all right? I mean, I went in for some blood work, and then when that was done, he walked in and started talking. Look, come on, this is my disease. I don't want you bugging me every five minutes. Bugging yeah. you? Really? Uh -huh. Christopher, this is our disease. You seem to think this is all about you, and it isn't. I want in on the decision-making. Hey, I have no problem with you giving some input when it comes right down to it that I'm going to... Got it. You know. Okay, it's your disease. Got it. But you know what? This tumor, it affects me just as much, if not more, oh, than it does really? you. Really? I'm not so sure about that. Really? Uh -huh. And have you tried seeing this from my perspective? Actually, I've been trying to figure it out on my end. How it to have the person you love... Look, if I've given you the impression that this is easy on me, then I apologize. How it feels to have the person you love most in the world dying right in front of your eyes. Okay. You're right. I didn't... Yeah, I didn't look at it that way. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm sorry. you gotta talk to me. Let me help. You... Uh, you're gonna move on, you know? You... You take the final exam and you graduate and I'm... And I'm gonna be left here. Marooned. Without you. You know, it's probably sound weird, but I, I really think that dying is easier when compared to living. I mean, it's sad, yeah, in some ways, but I think it's easier. Well, that is until the pain sets in. Uh, Zari said that could get pretty ugly. He actually said that? He no. said ugly? No, he didn't, but that's what he meant. So, what are the options? Well, you know, there's the chemo, the radiation. Uh, surgery is not an option, not at this point. Seems like the pancreas is a pretty difficult organ to deal with. Okay. So, we have choices to make, Christ. Decisions. You and I, okay? okay. Do this together? Yeah. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Go ahead. I'm good. Okay. Thanks. I'll be right back then. Okay.
Do you remember when we first got married where we lived? Um, yeah, that, uh, that apartment on the top floor of that old building in Rose Park District? Yeah, great view of the mountains. That was a cool old place. What made you think of that? Oh, I was just thinking about us, about you, the woman that inspired me, my muse, the woman that would wrap her arms and sometimes her legs around me the minute I came home. That was a long time ago. Yeah. We were young and crazy, no kids. We live two different lives now, Kevin. We do. The architect and the writer. Do you ever wonder why I write books for kids about rescue dogs that help the needy, the downtrodden? I assumed you enjoyed it. No, I, I do. I just, I mean, in, instead of other types of books. No, no, why? Well, the other types scare me. Yeah, I'm afraid people will get to know too much about me, that my, my writing would be too autobiographical. What's wrong with that? Well, I'm not a happy person, and I don't want people to see it. So you write for kids? Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, the unhappiness is there, but it's hidden, so they don't see it. I mean, come on, they're kids. Mm. So I can write about my ennui and euphemistic ways, and nobody hears it. It's perfect. You don't think they pick up on it? I doubt it. It's hidden pretty deep. Do you put it there on purpose? No, I think it comes through naturally. Huh. Well, maybe the kids are smarter than you think. Do you see it? In your books? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, you've never mentioned it. Well, I don't like talking about your books. Uh, okay, why? I just don't. <laughs> okay. Since I brought up the honesty thing, I... For lack of a better term, I am jealous. Resentful? Envious? Emulous? Something like that? Yeah, something like that. I don't believe you. Come on, see? Trust, Rachel. I'm going out on a limb. You're saying? I am jealous, or envious, or whatever. You write all these books, everyone adores you. You have all these fans and friends, and how many Instagram followers do you have? I don't, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Keep going. And I build buildings. And no one knows. So your ego is hurt because you're pretty much invisible to the world and your wife isn't? Yep. Come on, Kevin. You're an amazing architect. You have won awards So for... have you. And more. You've got, you know, people have made movies of your books. Not very good ones, but... Yeah. The best you can say about my buildings is they are energy efficient. You're not a happy person? What? You didn't notice? This food is pretty good. I had never been there before. Yeah? <laughs> You're pretty handy with those chopsticks. Here, uh, try them. Me? Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay. They're a lot easier once you get the hang of it. No. How'd you get used to them? Uh, my parents wanted us to be acquainted with other cultures, so I picked Japan, and mm -hmm. uh, I learned how to use chopsticks. Do you speak Japanese? A little. Yeah? Nice. Uh, Nihongo o Hanasemasen. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't speak Japanese. <laughs> hey, well, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's... Of all that's, the sentences to know. <laughs> that's the extent of my knowledge. You're nice. welcome. Okay. Um, hey, we're pretty different, you know? Are you saying that I'm weird? Well, no, no, uh, just that we're different from each other. Is that a good thing? But definitely, yes. <laughs> well, in what way? Well, I'm taller. Um, I'm cuter. <laughs> no, what I really meant was uh, we're just different personality-wise. So I'm not cute? Oh, no, you're very cute, but you're more outgoing and funnier than I am. Well, funny in what way? <laughs> I don't know. You're just really cool. I like that. Well, you're smart, you know, like chemistry, science stuff. No, I'm really not that smart. I just study. I bet you got a scholarship, an academic one. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I'm smart. That means you're I... smart, OK? <laughs> and you're really talented with art. I mean, I'm more of a stick figure kind of guy, so 
Okay, so we're different. Let's see if we have anything in common. Sounds good. Um, you go first. So we're both single? I mean, mm. I assume that you're single. Yes. <laughs> and you? Any kids? Two, with uh, one on the way. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you uh, looked uh, really scared. <laughs> no, um, I don't have any kids, and uh, I am not pregnant. Do you ever want to be pregnant? <laughs> or have kids? <laughs> Come on. No. Do I ever want to be pregnant? No. I that was, is the craziest question. I was following up on the kid thing, and it I've just came out. I've never heard on a first date. Um, no, I've I have heard other crazy questions, so no. don't feel too bad about yourself. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep my spirits high. <laughs> uh. Um. Yeah, I actually I keep a list of crazy questions. Mm -hmm. Yours is definitely at the top of it now, so I'm congratulations. Thank Weirdest you. Weirdest question award yep. goes to you. Yeah. Weird questions. <sighs> oh my goodness. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. no, I seem to attract a lot of losers. You're saying I'm a loser? No. Oh, okay. You're saying I'm attracted to you? Yes. Okay. Are you going to have to help me out with these chopsticks? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, first of all, you're holding them wrong. Oh, they're but the right way? We, yes, okay, yes. Well, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, so well, no. Where you do take you those. Um, <laughs> what are you laughing at? You. The little boy is coming out, and I've never really seen him before. Little boy? Yes, it's cute. It's a new side of you. It's not pouting, per se, but yeah, his feelings are hurt because his girlfriend has more friends than he does. And I really don't. Uh, yeah, right. No, I'm serious. But I'm a writer. I work alone. Sometimes I go days without talking to anyone over the age of 11. Well, I'm over 11. Yes, you are. You also have an office full of people who adore you. The whole world adores you. But they don't know me. The people at work just see me as the boss, the guy that signs the paychecks. You sure about that? Well. How do you see me? I see the beautiful man I married. The man all of my girlfriends wish they'd married. <laughs> no, they don't. Yes, it's a true story. Well, what else? I see the good, the bad, and the ugly. The man who cries at romantic comedies. <laughs> Mia culpa. Even some TV commercials. Yeah, and tell your girlfriends that, they won't want to marry me. No, it would only endear them all the more. Yeah, I see... A smart man, handsome, kind, determined, and talented, complicated, angry, competitive, impatient, control freak, a good father. And tonight I see a little boy. And somehow, all of that doesn't quite do it for you, does it? Sorry, give you any indication? Yeah. yeah, he said six to nine months, you know, give or take. Isn't that what he said two weeks ago? Yeah, yeah, I think he says that to everybody. You know, some kid walks in with a runny nose, and six to nine months. The upside, kid, is that you don't have to worry about going to school. Yeah, his communication skills are pretty amazing. Yeah. He also said that with this kind of cancer, you gotta love that word. It could be a lot sooner. It just depends. Do you think Azari's even the right guy for this? I have no idea. I mean, he seems to know what he's talking about. How do you know? You know? Seems like every doctor is the best in the country. People come from all over the world just to see this guy. Yeah. I don't know. Do you think chemo would help? I don't know. Maybe, I don't think so. Are you sure? Because from what I've been reading about Yes, chemo they can do chemo and radiation, Grace. I feel like they, they're setting my body on fire from the inside. 
and uh, you know, with the hope that maybe the tumor would shrink, you know, and then perhaps they could do a little bit of surgery, maybe get the cancer out, and then things could possibly improve a little bit, and I might get a few additional months of horrible, miserable, painful life. But it might be exactly what you Grace, need. chemo kills your body, right? It takes you right up to death's door only so that you can come back and finish the job on your own. Yeah, take it all the way, open that door, walk right through. Yeah, I just, yeah, I'm not up for that. Do you think surgery could save your life? Or maybe, look, maybe look, even just give okay, you a few okay, more years okay, fine, instead fine. of months? Anything is possible, and uh, we might also win the lottery. Well, then let's just get a lottery ticket. Huh? <laughs> I have I have no idea what that means. <laughs> well, oh, you're funny, you know. I can be, if the moment's right. Mm. Is this moment right? Yeah, yeah it's pretty good. It's a good time. Yeah, <laughs> not bad. I'll go with that. Uh, get a lottery ticket. Well, it's worth a shot. Yeah. Tell me a secret. Well, if I did that, it wouldn't be a secret anymore. So give up one of your secrets. Why? I'm curious. OK. OK. Um, I had a boyfriend in high school. And Rachel, that's not a secret. Right after high school graduation, we ran away from home. We went to Las Vegas. Found one of those Elvis impersonators. Did it? No, no. We didn't. Why not? I was only 17. They wouldn't let us. How come you've never told me about that? You never asked. Why would I think to ask if you? Okay, well, never mind. Um, you ever think about him? This high school runaway boyfriend of yours? Yeah, sometimes. You ever want to run away from me? Yeah. In fact, I did. When? Three years ago. You were going to some week-long architectural conference in Los Angeles and taking a bunch of your staff with you. Yeah, I vaguely remember that. We do one or two of those every year. Yeah, I know. So I took the kids to my mom's. Did it your mom's? The kids did. I went to Hawaii. Wow. Cool. How long were you there? While you were in LA. Were you thinking about coming back? Does it matter? I did, obviously. In fact, we were almost on the same flight back from LA. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been awkward. Uh, what'd you do in Hawaii? Um, got a bungalow on the beach, took surfing lessons, hiked a volcano, I went to this luau, ate a bunch of great seafood. I got a tan. You didn't notice. Did you go alone? Went alone. Doesn't mean I was alone while I was there. I ran into some really great people, some some fans. We had such a fun time. And you never said a word? No. For the record, I, I've never cheated on you. Define cheat. Have you ever cheated on me? No. Then how about you define cheat? What'd you tell the kids? That I needed some me time. And that it was our little secret. Hmm. Good kids. Obedient kids. Yeah. Doesn't really seem fair to them. So many things aren't fair to them, Kevin. <sighs> I'll be right back.
Yeah, I'm really sorry to put you through all this, honey. Oh, yeah, like you did this on purpose. Well, I say that pain can change a person, you know? I could get angry at everything, at everyone. I don't think I will, but I swear it's possible. Mm, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Could drive a wedge between us. Drive me crazy, could drive you crazy, turn me into a monster. Christopher. What? You just always overthink everything. You are looking at this from every possible angle. Stop. Just stop, and let's take this one day at a time. All right. OK. OK. All right. So in the interest of time, uh -huh. I think I should probably take up some really dangerous sport or activity, like rock climbing or hang gliding or Hey, how about NASCAR racing? NASCAR racing. Mm hmm Well, I think you're a little too old for NASCAR. Haven't they got a senior circuit? Uh, no. Oh. Well, if they did, mm -hmm. then they'd be able to say that he died doing what he loved. Oh. Well, I don't know, honey. In that case, you'd probably have to die in bed. Ooh. I like that idea. Just saying. <laughs> so you're, what, 25? 24. Oh. Yeah. I'm 21. <laughs> Oh. 24. Yeah. So did you finish your undergrad stuff then at State? Yeah. Uh, and then I, I did one of those humanitarian trips for about a year. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, thanks. Uh, where did you go? Uh, Africa. Wow. Mm -hmm. How was that? Uh, it was interesting. Uh, I had a lot of crazy experiences, uh, some really awesome ones. I met a lot of amazing people. Um, but, you know, it, just, it got me out of the States for a while, too. So. Why do you want to get out of the States? Mm. Was the FBI after you? <laughs> Just stuff. Uh, have you ever wanted to do a trip like that? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about it. Uh, mm -hmm. But then I got engaged. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, uh, that obviously didn't work out. Yeah. Have you ever been engaged? Uh, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah, being engaged is different. You know, it, it's like you're committed, but not really. Like you only have one of the rings, you know? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like trying out for the team. Yeah. And I uh, guess I didn't make the cut. What happened? He, Chad, decided that I just, you know, wasn't right for him. You know, tall enough, smart enough, cute enough. <laughs> what was wrong with this guy? How much time do you have? Oh, jeez. Well, how long ago was that? Uh, a couple years. Huh? It's still buggy or still hurt, I guess? Um, not really. You know, every once in a while, I put his picture on the wall and throw darts at it. But other than that, it's... Uh, so what made you say yes to me on the app? You really want to know? I guess. I didn't. My sister did. Well, am I supposed to be on a date with your sister then? No, no, that would be weird. Uh, she's 11, so... <laughs> that would be weird. Um, what's the deal with her? Well, she grabbed my phone one day, and she sent you a heart. Oh, so she's the one who likes me. No, she thought that I would like you. <laughs> OK. And you had nothing to do with us getting together, then? Technically, but um, I'm glad that she sent you a heart. <laughs> Along with a whole bunch of other guys. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so I'm really not that special, then? I mean, I think you're pretty special. I send a heart back to you. True. I've got to admit that... What? This more honesty? Yeah. OK. I have to admit that I don't know if I want to keep doing this much longer. All right. Rachel, when was the last time that we honestly said I love you to each other, truthfully? Yeah, but is it that we really don't love each other? Yeah, maybe we just don't like each other? Yeah, maybe. So what are we going to do about that? Well, seems like there's several options. Sure, we could try counseling again. Yeah. Didn't help the last few times. No, it didn't. We could just keep doing what we have been doing, ignoring each other. I suppose, yeah, drifting further and further apart. That's an option, not a good one. We could, we could take a break from each other, officially. Sure, sure, and of course, there's always. Yeah. Divorce. Oh, it's odd. 
that word when actually spoken out loud just sort of hangs in the air. Yeah. It's an ugly word. I choose you every day, and I'm so lucky you choose me, too. I didn't know what marrying your best friend meant until I met you. You're my first thought every morning and my last thought before I go to sleep. You inspire a love in me that I never knew was possible. Why'd you pick a card that talks about love when we can't even say the word to each other? Except maybe flippantly at the end of a phone call? Yeah, that doesn't really count, does it? No. No, it doesn't. Why'd you pick that card? I didn't. Lily did. We were out shopping and... Sorry, and you went along with it? What was I supposed to do? She was so excited, she thought it was the perfect card. After all these years, I hope I've been the kind of guy that an amazing woman like you truly deserves. Happy anniversary. You mean that? Why'd you get me this card? It's our anniversary. Did you even read it? I read it. I read a lot of cards, and I chose that one. Why? And I noticed you signed it, Love Kevin. That's how you sign an anniversary card. Rachel? Yeah. I noticed you signed just your name. No, I didn't. Sorry. It's okay. You know what's odd? We give each other cards that say the things we oh, can't or don't or are afraid to say. It's easier with a card. Do you think it's okay to get mad, God? Well. I suppose it depends on what you're mad about. Overall, I think he could handle you reading him the riot act. No, really. I'm angry. Mm, you're not going to swear at him, are you? Maybe. Well, I think you could probably handle that, too. I don't be mad at him. I'm not. Really? Yeah. Why? No, I don't think God has anything to do with this. He could stop this if he wanted yeah, to. Yeah, maybe he doesn't want to. And you're OK with I it. Mean, do I have a choice? <laughs> Why don't you just get mad and scream, yell, cry, something. I do. Yeah, I do. I just don't want you to see that side of me right now, that's all. So you are angry? No. Then? I don't think anger gets us anywhere. Oh, well, because I am angry. Really? And when I talk to God, believe me, I let him know about it. <laughs> I can only imagine. So if you're not angry, then what, what are you? Because You've changed. I mean, it's understandable, but I'm just wondering. Yeah, I just think overall I'm, wow, overwhelmed. Yeah, I mean, I have thought over the years what it'd be like to you know, sit in front of somebody in a white jacket and hear the words, I'm sorry, Mr. Stevens, but you've got cancer. I always thought that I'd come back with some witty remark like, wow, that's interesting, or whoosh, I guess it could be worse. What did you say? Nothing. No, I just sat there absorbing the moment. Yeah. You know, it's odd. I, I wasn't um, scared, angry, or sad. No, I was just, well, like I said, I was just overwhelmed. You know, what am I going to do now? What's the next step? How do I tell the kids? How do I tell you? When you did tell me? Yeah. I thought I was going to die. No, you know, <laughs> I think I want my art and theater students and oh, maybe the kids and grandkids, they want. I just want them to paint my casket. Yeah, I don't care. They can do whatever they like. You know, they can put a your names, your Shakespeare quotes, some crazy emoji. I don't care. Just, just paint the whole thing with these bright, wild, crazy colors. That'd be pretty cool, don't you think? 
Well, then I will paint a great big red heart on it. Mm. That's great. That's perfect. Yeah, so just get me some, you know, inexpensive wooden casket. By the time you guys are finished with it, I'll be the envy of the whole cemetery. You are impossible. Yeah. You, you know, if I weren't impossible, would that make me possible? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out of here. Yeah, good plan. Okay, okay, I'm thinking. Um, do, 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 that's helpful. Do, do. <laughs> Have you ever been in love? Interesting question. Hmm. I did tell you that I was engaged at one point. True, but did you love him? Okay, I'll answer. But you go first. Well, I think that's cheating. You're right, it is, but you go first. Okay, um, me in love? Yeah. Sort of. I, uh, I went to Colgate University out of high school because it was close to home. Colgate is a perfect fit for a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but uh, about my third week there, I met Pamela, or Pammy. And how did you meet Pammy? Just in class, yeah. Um, we dated for quite a while. How long? About seven months. Impressive. Yeah. Um, I was pretty much smitten with her. Yeah. <laughs> smitten. Is that a good word? It sounds like I got... Hit across the face, Pammy. But <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh yeah, we started talking about marriage and throwing I love yous back and forth. But soon, suddenly, just something uh, went wrong. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I think she decided she wasn't totally over her old boyfriend. Wow. You were really into her, weren't you? Yep. Pretty much. She was really really pretty and talented and she played the flute kind of an irritating instrument <laughs> but you know she was smart and nice most of the time some of the time um yeah it turns out her former boyfriend was going to be in town for a tournament or something an athlete uh, i think it was a hot dog eating contest <laughs> that he was very good at um and i couldn't compete so yeah he showed up and that pretty much ended things um, did you ever hear from her again Wow. Sorry. No, oh, no, it's cool. <laughs> and looking back, we weren't really good for each other. I mean, why would I want to be married to someone like that anyway? Right? You know, yeah. pretty, smart, talented. Yeah. You wouldn't, <laughs> you know? Definitely not. No. Uh, to be honest, though, she was probably kind of out of my league. Unlike me. Are you kidding? That You are so far out of my league. You must play in the minor leagues. I'm a little lost on the metaphor, but the point <laughs> is, you are way better than Pammy. Gee, thanks. Yeah. Okay, your turn. The love thing. Oh. Yeah, once. Mm. The engagement fiasco. That was enough. Love's difficult. You know, I don't think anyone's ever really defined it. You know, it's, it's a feeling, a sensation. You know, it's not like a disease. I mean, actually, now that I think of it. <laughs> Like with a disease, you can define it, right? Like you can see it, analyze it, look at it from under a microscope. You can live with it, you can fix it, take a pill. And the disease might even kill you, but at least you can define it. Now there's, there's a difference between you know, dying of a heart attack and dying of a broken heart. Because with a heart attack, you, know, you, you, at least, you, know, you know what's going on with it, but love, not really sure what it is. But whatever it is, if it's one of those one-way street kind of loves, then... Yep, I totally agree. One-way love. There's something we have in common. Mm, right. <laughs> you know, if we got divorced, I think it'd be different than most. In what way? Well, most people fight over everything. Cars, house, kids, I just, I don't think we would. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. We don't need each other's money. Yeah, I don't think it'd be ugly at all. Pretty simple, actually. We just file a few papers. I keep the house. I'd get a place close by, mm. joint custody. Yeah. I think the kids honestly would be okay with that. Oh yeah, they know we're not the couple everyone thinks we are. Right. And you'd have no problem finding someone else. Oh, please. No, seriously. 
Great looking guy, charismatic, successful. You're like a dream come true for every 25 year old. And you, the gorgeous, famous divorcee that everyone adores. Yeah, that'd just scare guys off. Uh, only the ones you don't want. True. You know how marriage looks different from the inside than it does from the outside? Yeah, big time. I think it's the same with divorce. Probably. Yeah, divorced people our age are pretty strange. Yeah. yeah, there's a reason they're divorced. Are we strange? Yeah, we are. How so? Well, we can't seem to figure out how to love each other. Yeah, that's pretty strange. When do you want to tell the kids? I don't know. I don't even know how to tell them. I mean, how do you do that? Tell people you love that you're dying? Well, maybe we tell our kids and let them tell the grandkids? No. I don't know. It might be best. No, I mean, come on, they're too little. They don't understand this kind of stuff. Hmm, I think they're smarter than you think. Uh, that can wait. We'll tell them later if that's okay. What's going on with you? What? Just, I don't know, it feels to me like your whole life is, is up in the air and you're just taking it all in your stride. I, I just don't understand that. Stride? Well, yeah, my life took a hard right turn when I wanted to keep going straight. Yeah, I want to grow old, Grace. I want to know what it feels like, you know, to wonder how much more time I have left and not because of some stupid disease. And I don't want to miss... You know, graduations and, you know, birthdays and Lily's first prom and Jimmy's little league baseball games. And, yeah. yeah. And how many more grandkids you think we'll have? <laughs> and, and they won't even know me. No, they won't. I mean, it'll just be some kind of a, I don't know, a, a bunch of digital photographs tucked away in some online folder that nobody will ever open. No, don't worry about that. I'll make sure they know who you are. Oh, OK. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. What's that old Bob Dylan song that I love? Which one? I don't know. I've been thinking about it lately. It's, uh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you think they'll let me in? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Oh, yeah. Come on, move around a little bit. Come on, shake I'm it I'm going to go in the house. No, this I don't is going think down. So. Knock, <laughs> knock, knocking on heaven's door. Boom, 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 boom. No, I'm definitely going in the house. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm no. headed. Here I go. No, you stay right here. You stay right here. You stay uh, right here. That's it? That's all the singing I get? That's it. Well. That's it. <laughs> Question. What do you think has been the worst part of our marriage? You really want to go down that road? Yeah, sure. The worst, Kevin? I don't, I don't know. There's been a lot of worst. Yeah, I know. But uh, pick one. This one, I don't, I don't think I can do that. Um, okay, let's see. When you went on that business trip to Italy and you didn't take me with you. Well, I was gonna be busy. No, I know, I, but I made it clear that I really wanted to go. Yeah, well, like I said. You know. Everyone else was taking their significant others. That hurt a lot. And then, like, like I said, I can't just do one. Um, a couple years ago, I mentioned wanting to have another baby, and you said it was a terrible idea. I'm, we're both very busy, Rachel. We already have two wonderful children. We no, I know, I know. I just, I had this motherly instinct, you know, telling me that maybe we should have another one. Might have been good for us. Good for us? Could have been. You never said much then about it. You must not have been listening. Okay. So that was the worst. No. Uh, there's more. The worst. The worst was when I got in that car accident. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember that. What exactly do you remember? Uh, 
let's see, it was a few years ago? Six, um, to be exact. Right, and you got pretty banged up in the hospital for a little while. Nothing life-threatening. What else? Um, well, let's see, uh, you had, had an operation on your leg? It seemed to go okay. Your leg's fine now? I had two operations on my leg. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Do you really remember, or are you just saying that? No, I, I remember. My leg still hurts sometimes. Sorry. The worst was that when you realized my leg was gonna be okay, you, you moved on. And I got really depressed and angry and you didn't notice. I'd been in a major car accident, totaled the car. The cab and the kids weren't with me. I ended up in the hospital for 10 days, Kevin, and you barely visited me. That's not true. Yeah, it is. Even the nurses wondered why you didn't come around more often. I was your wife, Kevin. And I was in pain and in trouble. You think you could have set aside your ego just once? Ego? Yeah. Kevin, you know, thought about someone other than yourself. What if I'd been in an accident? Would you have wanted to visit me? What if I died in an accident? You could have taken the house, the life insurance money, the kids, the business, without me in the way. That is a very cruel question. Well, what's your honest answer? I don't want you to die, Kevin. But yeah, do I sometimes think that life would be better, easier for both of us if- If I wasn't around. Yeah. Well, honesty. You asked. You're right. You're right, I did. Hey, honey. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're at dinner. Yeah, he did. He loved it. Okay. Oh, okay, I'll tell him. Uh-huh. I love you, too. Okay, bye. That was Lily. Wanted to wish us a happy anniversary. This whole situation kind of changes stuff, doesn't it? Well, yeah. I can see the wheels turning. I don't know. What, you don't know, or you're afraid you're gonna ruin my day? Yes. I've, I've been put in the uncomfortable position of having to think about me instead of us. And oh, I don't even like to put it this way. It's all right. Well, it's like I said before, I mean, you, you're going to move on. You'll be in a better place. And what am I supposed to do? I, what do I do when the man I have loved since I was 16 is no longer by my side. And then I just start to feel selfish for even thinking about me. I mean, seriously, my every thought should be on you right now and helping you get through this. And yet, I don't know. Well, I'm sure you've thought about loneliness and being alone. Hmm. You're still young and vibrant. <laughs> Please, I'm not young anymore. You're still beautiful prettier than you were at 16. Wait, are you saying I wasn't cute when I was 16? No. Hmm. I remember <laughs> the first time I saw you. Yeah, I know the story. Yeah. Yeah, it was my senior year at Marshall. It was an algebra class. Geometry. I, I'm telling the story. <laughs> okay. And, uh, yeah, you were 
transferred to Marshall that year. You were uh, about a week late. Mm -hmm. uh, you walked in, teacher introduced you, and I was in love. And I thought you were in love with Becky Smith. Well, I was. That's before I fell in love with you. That before you saw me or before you fell in love with me? Same thing. Mm. Okay. So when did you fall in love with me? Oh, well, that would have been when I saw you sitting behind your desk in our geometry <laughs> class. Yeah, right. No. Actually, it was about two or three months later. You walked me home from school, and it was cold, and you gave me your jacket. My letterman's jacket. Yes. And you kept it. Yes, of course I did. It smelled like you. <laughs> and I still had it. It's in the back of my closet, and I still smell it sometimes. Did you sleep with it? <gasps> I'll never tell. You slept with it. Oh. I can tell. I can see it in your Shaking. eyes. You slept <laughs> with it. Oh, I never get tired of revisiting the stories of when we were young. And I love hearing about when you first fell in love with me. Such a sweet time in our lives. You were such a sweet boy. Uh. And the cool thing is, I have loved you every, every day, every hour, every minute, every second ever since. I know. I know. But what am I supposed to do when those days and hours and minutes and the seconds I'm doing it. Okay, truth or dare? Really? Yeah. Okay. Dare. I dare you to tell the truth. Again, cheating. Yeah, you're right. Um, what are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? Hmm. I'm probably the thing that most young girls are afraid of. You know, getting married to some weirdo that goes completely nuts, beats the crap out of me on a regular basis, sets the house on fire, killing me, the kids, and the dog, pleads insanity, blames it all on me, and the court lets him off. Something like that. Oh, you really thought this through? Actually, no. I watched an episode of Murder in the Neighborhood last night. Okay. Then what are you really afraid of? That I'll get married sometime in the next few years, probably, to someone I don't really love. Wow, uh, that's getting kind of heavy for a first date. But why marry him? Because he checks all the boxes. Oh, you're a box checker? Not now, but I'm afraid that you know, I'll get to that point. Well, if you had boxes to check, then what would they be? Not murdering someone in the neighborhood. You know, has a job, drives a car, loves me likes me or, you know, at least is willing to put up with me. That's, that's about it. You need to be pickier. You think so? Yeah. You're awesome. You're, you're great. And you need a much longer list with more boxes and better boxes. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so now you. Yeah. Truth or dare? Uh, truth. Cool. Do you really think that you'll be a dentist someday? What do you mean? You know, some people have ideas and dreams, but then they end up settling for something less, you know, something easier. You don't think I have what it takes to be a dentist? No, no, I didn't say that. I just mean, it's a lot, you know, going to dental school, studying long hours, looking in people's mouths. I have what it takes. I, I always like to finish what I start. Well, there were times in Africa when it would have made a lot of sense to call it quits. Saw things I don't ever want to see again. I had guns pointed at me. It got pretty insane at times. I just stuck it out. Yeah. Like I said, I... I like to finish what you start. So, do you want to 
get married, do the kid thing. I can't believe you asked me that on a first date. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so? If I actually do get married, yeah. I think I'd probably have a kid. Maybe two. Possibly. Does that scare you, having kids? Definitely. Uh, do you even, you know, want to be a dad? Another great first date <laughs> question. Um, I don't really have good dad role models in my life. I, I have two uncles, and, and they're not exactly what I'd call dad material. And my dad, I, I mean, I love him, but I don't want to be like him. He's a good guy, but not a great dad. Are you afraid that even though you don't want to end up being like him, that you'll end up being like him? Yeah, let's face it. Growing up for me it was not a pleasant experience. I couldn't wait to get out of the house, and I don't ever want my kids to feel that way. I don't think they will. Thanks. All right. What's your worst time of our marriage? Well, it's not as dramatic as yours. And I'm only going to do one. It was the time I realized you don't love me. When was that? A few years ago. So I don't love you? I don't think so. Is there, is there a specific moment? I was lying in bed. One or two in the morning, you were asleep next to me. I was reading something. I don't remember what it was. Came across the word love in the book. I don't think it was in a romantic context. I think it was probably like, I love this thing or that thing, you know? It's so strange we use that word and associate it with inanimate objects. Anyway, I was just looking at you. The light on your face was perfect, soft. A mixture of moonlight and my reading lamp. You're a really beautiful woman, Rachel. I just looked at you for a long time, listening to you breathe, like your little sleep sounds, adjust your body here and there. And then you rolled over, and I honestly wondered if you loved me. It was hard to even ask the question. This woman who shared my life, slept in my bed, gave me children. Does she love me? I don't know why, but I got the, I got the impression, sensation that you didn't. Did you ask yourself if you loved me? Yeah. I did. And? I didn't know. I couldn't, couldn't come up with an answer. I wanted to. I knew I did, but... There were other times, but that was the worst. Why haven't you ever told me this before? Like I said, I haven't really been honest with you. And you never asked. Here's your tea. Thanks. My pleasure. <sighs> so, the elephant in the room is... What? How long do you think it'll be before you meet someone? And don't tell me you haven't thought about it. I haven't thought of meeting someone. In fact, I don't even want to talk about this. Are you afraid of meeting someone? I don't want to talk about this. Are you afraid of being alone? <sighs> Christopher, honestly, um, alone, no. But I'm not looking forward to the loneliness. And there's a difference. Honey, I'm not going to be alone. I have the three kids, seven grandkids, and they are all going to look out for me. Yeah, but that's not the same. Uh, well, no, no, it isn't. Okay, back to the elephant. 
You always said that if you died first, you'd want me to get remarried. Well, it's because men don't do well on their own. Do women? Uh, some do, yeah. You? I have no idea, Well, what do you think? <sighs> okay. All right, I was hoping that you would say something like, uh, hmm, I'll just get busy with volunteer work, you know, time with kids and grandkids, and I'll, I'll always only be in love with Christopher Stevens. I'll never hold hands, never have a crush. That just sounds silly, though. Someone my age having a crush? Yeah. But I think all of that would be really selfish of me. It's a part of my brain that says, I just want Grace all to myself. And what does the other part of your brain say? It says that I think you should meet someone. You're far too lovely and beautiful to not meet someone. I mean, it might take a little while, but you will. It's your nature. And your memory of me, it won't disappear. But it'll begin to fade a little. Now, you've given this a lot of thought. And that's what you really think. <laughs> I'm not so sure I wanted to hear that. So what's it like studying art? Probably a lot different than studying chemistry. Yeah. Did you like to draw even as a kid? Yeah, you know, I've always been able to draw what I see. Now that's amazing. <laughs> it was funny, I took this, because you have to, a uh, portrait sketching class, and I got paired, this was my freshman year, with the cutest guy in class, like maybe even in the whole school. He's how fortunate. Actually, it was kind of distracting. You know, he was gorgeous. And as I think of it, he was probably hoping that he would have been paired up with somebody else. No, I doubt it. <laughs> anyway, I was supposed to draw this guy's picture. But I did one of those caricatures, you know, mm -hmm. the ones that make you look weird, oh, you know, yeah, funny. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm actually really good at those. The teacher loved it. Did Mr. Gorgeous? Yeah, not so much. I think that his vanity got in the way. And I... I was hoping, you know, in an odd way, that he would ask me out. And we spent so much time looking at each other, you know, it felt like forever, but nothing. Well, he really missed out. Actually, as I think about the conversations we had while we were sitting there, they weren't exactly mind-blowing, you know? More mind-numbing. So, not like our conversations. Not even close. So, should we venture into the best part of our marriage? I suppose we could give it a try. Okay. I'll go first. It's, um, it's an easy answer for me. Right after we got married. I know where you're going with this. We got that internship. Washington, D.C. Yeah, 18 months. We were so excited. The city was fascinating. We didn't have any kids. <laughs> we got that dumpy little studio apartment in Georgetown. And you loved what you were doing. I was working at the bank, but we, we made all those friends and they'd come over and we'd sit around on the floor and eat pizza. With pineapple. And pepperoni. <laughs> We talk about politics, religion, world affairs. We haven't done that in a while. I miss that. It was so fun to be so young and in love. You know, we didn't have any real pressure. And we really loved each other. We really did. There were some other good times, but that was the best. <laughs> that was a good time. So about you, 
was your best time? Our fifth anniversary. Is that the one where we... Our folks paid for us to go to England for a couple weeks. They watched Lily and off we went. Mm -hmm. uh, the history, pulse of the city, architecture, of course. But the best part was when we rented that car and drove off into the countryside, stayed at bed and breakfasts, talked to the locals. You remember Stratford? Oh, of course, we saw that great production of Hamlet. And that, uh, that picnic we went on out in the middle of nowhere. I think we were in the... Wales. Yeah, yeah. Grassy field all to ourselves. Slight breeze, warm, sunny day, a few blankets. And we... That was nice. How'd we lose it? Little by little, misstep by misstep. We have so much to live for. Our, our life, when viewed from the outside, it, it's like a fairy tale, a dream. The handsome architect. The gorgeous writer. The house, the kids, it, it looks perfect. It's the inside. Yeah. What do we do? Where do we go from here? Any ideas? Oh, you ruled out counseling again. <laughs> I suppose we could try forgiveness. There's a lot to forgive. On both sides. Seems like uncharted territory. Yeah, kind of scary. What do we have to lose? Pretty much everything. What do we have to gain? Pretty much everything. Call it a leap of faith. Do I ever get to see this masterpiece? When it's done. You at least gotta tell me what it is. It's a drawing. Okay, but of what? You. What? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's amazing. You are really good at this. I told you. Jeez. Can I keep it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's all yours. Thank you. <laughs> it's the best portrait I've ever had. You know, I was wondering, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Not Soda Springs. I've done my time there. Soda Springs? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, besides that, where would you want to live? Um, I don't know. Maybe Paris to study art. Italy, you know, Rome, Venice, yeah. Florence. Mm -hmm. I think it would be really cool to go somewhere exotic where you don't know what anyone's talking about. Yeah, that's true. And you could do that with art. It's like art transcends language or sort of has a language all of its own, you know? That's really cool. Uh, so as a dentist, where do you see yourself ending up? I don't know. Uh, first, I want to get into a really good dental school, so. Soda Springs has an excellent dental school. Really? No. Oh. <laughs> so when you're a dentist, do you see yourself ever going back to Africa again? You know, maybe mm. doing free dental work for kids? Oh, I'd love to, yeah, in a heartbeat. Um, you know, maybe my wife could be my assistant and we could work together. Uh, yeah. I just think being a dentist would be, will be really cool. I agree. Okay, uh, time for the fortune cookie read off. Oh. You read mine okay. right. and I'll read yours. Okay. So there's... You are the crispy noodle and the veggie salad of life. Yay, that is me. <laughs> All right, uh, your turn. Hmm. An interesting medical opportunity is in your near future. <laughs> Sounds like surgery. Dental school, silly. Oh, hey, that's great. <laughs> good one. Hmm. You're a really good guy, Anthony. You think so, huh? Yeah. You're really cute and funny. You have a beautiful mouth. You mentioned that. It's very important to a dentist. 
<laughs> it's getting kind of late. I should probably give you a ride back to your bike. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the first time I've ever said that. <laughs> oh, we got to get a picture. Uh, uh, sure, sounds good. <laughs> this whole me meeting someone thing you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Even if I wanted to meet someone, who's going to want to meet me? <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of guys. Seriously. They might be interested to begin with, but as soon as they realize what the big picture is... What's the big picture? That I will always love you. And as soon as they see that in my eyes, whoosh, they're gone. They might even leave skid marks. Uh, well, um... I guess I see a different big picture. You just... You don't get it, do you? What? I have loved you my whole life. That's not gonna stop. How could I ever love anyone as much as I love you? So I'm your forever love. And that's just not for this life, but I'm, I'm talking about the next one, too. Of course. We've talked about this. Yeah, I know. I was just checking, so, so this whole till death do us part thing. No, not... I, I don't believe that. I still think you'll meet someone. So this is your big picture? Yeah. Mm. I don't want to marry you. Why wouldn't he? Uh, lots of reasons. <laughs> I'm going to see all these pictures I have of you everywhere. No, 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 he'll want to marry. I honestly so don't... Just, just listen for a second. I'm okay with it. Really? Yeah. Uh, how can you say that? Because I love you. And... I know you love me. And I know that our life, our love, will go on forever. How I don't know. It's know that it will. How could it not? I don't want you to be happy. I want you to have joy in this life. And when you find that someone and you fall in love. You really do love me, don't you? Pretty cool bike. Thanks. I guess we're at that point where I tell you I had a really good time. And I say thank you for the Chinese. Right. Oh, right. Yeah, the food. And yeah. Fun conversation. And the picnic. Yeah. The picnic was very fun. I like your shoes. Uh, thanks. I actually have a pair at home just like them. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> I got to tell you, I. Really had a good time. You already told me that. <laughs> uh, I guess I did. Um, right. Anyway, uh, do you think you might like Anthony, to... I... my mother told me to never do this on a first date. What? Give me your phone. Why? Just give me your phone. Okay. 
Dialing 911? <laughs> Cute. <laughs> no. Uh, now you have my number. And my roommates told me to never do this. <laughs> okay. Well, it has been a rather intriguing evening, celebrating the forgettable number 13. <laughs> Thank you for the necklace. It's perfect. Thank you for the watch. It's very beautiful. You know, I had it engraved. I noticed. Well, the years haven't all been forgettable, Kevin. There's been some good times, too. Yeah, our summer trips to the lake have been rather memorable. Yes, and Christmas has always been it's quite the adventure. Not always in keeping with the holiday spirit, but... No, no. There's been some good times, just not enough, and not lately. Yeah? How would you define lately? Six years or so? Okay. I think I would have said three or four, but... So do we want to keep doing this, or? I could flip a coin. Heads, yes. Tails, no. No. No, I don't want to keep doing this, but... I... I do want you. We're like a couple of fish, Rachel. Swimming in separate bowls. Maybe we can see each other. But we don't touch. Might be nice to swim in the same bowl. We do have a fairly large fishbowl at home. And my mom has the kids for the night. What are you suggesting? We could go home, curl up on the couch, mm -hmm. watch a romantic movie, followed by a midnight swim in the rain. What movie do you have in mind? <laughs> Maybe Love Actually. <laughs> you hate that movie. <laughs> yes, I do, but you love it. Mm. Okay. You know, it's kind of strange, but... I mean, it's an odd feeling, actually. That I'm not going to be around much longer. Well, there's always forever. Yeah, I'm grateful for that. <laughs> this has been a really fun ride with you, Grace. Honey, what, what do you think about when you're alone? Like, when you're in the car and you're driving or you're... Having breakfast early in the morning? Yeah. When we're lying in bed and you're fast asleep and I'm still wide awake? <laughs> yeah, then. No, um... Well, like you say, I have a tendency to overthink things, so... No, but I wonder about... You know, that last... Sunday night dinner with the family. I wonder what that'll be like. 
I really love that tradition. And, you know, what'll be the last word I'll ever say, the last song I'll ever hear? What'll I say in my last prayer? Our last kiss? Our last I love you? I think those will probably be the last words you say. Yeah. And the last words I'll hear. Ah, mm. <sighs> Christopher. Why can't life just be like a movie and we fast forward to the end? <laughs> yeah, you really want to do that? No. <laughs> no, I guess not. your mom and dad today? They went to my other grandparents' house. Yes. You got, you got, you got, you got a soccer team. That's soccer. Right. You're the best. Come on, let's go dye your hair crazy colors. Your mom will like it. <laughs> oh, you. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Mm. How's Christopher? Today. Today's a pretty good day. <laughs> we love being here. OK. Hey, let's everybody get together. All right? Everybody get together. Yeah, the uh, the food is in the kitchen. Right. So what have you prepared for us tonight, honey? Well, I was feeling so thankful that I decided, let's do another Thanksgiving. <laughs> so I made another turkey. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. And uh, Sean and Emily and their kids, as usual, will be a little late tonight. Mm -hmm. And Sarah and Adam, they are at Adam's parents' house tonight. So they can't be with us, but... Uh, it's just us then, or for the moment. And I'm really grateful, mm. grateful to have all of you here. I love it when you guys come over and join us for Sunday dinner, so. Anyway, Kevin, would you say grace for us, please? Sure, Dad, yeah. yeah. Thank you. God is good, God is great, and we thank him for this food. By his hands we all are fed. We thank you, Lord, for daily bread. And. Please bless our family, and especially Grandpa at this time. Amen. 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 Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Excellent. On to the kitchen. You, keep your fingers out of the pie. <laughs> Sunny days are better with you. Your love is free. 